Good morning everybody and welcome to my humble abode again. Today I would like to build a quarry and a tesseract. So let's get started. First of all I go down to my workshop and we need some gold and we need some iron. In fact I need 16 gold and 12 iron. I think that's 12, 14. And then I need some diamonds. And from diamonds, I'm going to use some nether diamond ore, I think. If I can find it. No, I can't see it today. That's just ordinary, ordinary diamond ore will just do fine. That should be in this chest, right? I need um, 11 diamonds, therefore, I need six of these. Not seven, six will do just fine. So, first of all, we take the diamonds to the pulverizer, and put those in there, and then let's go back upstairs because what I need to do is to make some gears. So, what I'm going to do is to put 16 golds in here and the and the 12 irons here i have a red a redstone clock and here i have a gear on the casting table so what will happen is that these will melt or smelt come out of here with a red and it go through here go into the hopper below and then downstairs out into one of my chests so it'll come down through this hopper here when they're smelted go down and stairs and end up in the workshop somewhere. So now I should have my diamonds. And from those six diamond ore, I have 12 diamonds. What I also needed to do was to make some um, red. And what did I need to make? Let's have a look. I need to make this cinnabar and the easiest way to make cinnabar is to take redstone ore and um, put that through the pulverizer and if I use nether redstone ore I get better a better higher output so let me just show you what happens with the nether redstone ore if I put it into here with sand it will come out as redstone ore and give me output I think you sometimes get rich like this. It doesn't matter very much. And then we come back here to the pulverizer, put the redstone ore into the pulverizer. And with a bit of luck, I'll end up with some more cinnabar. There's supposed to be a 25% chance, so 38 should give me around about 9. But normally I get about 4, I think. so. I think them's calculated somewhere. And here we have the one. In fact, you actually only need one to make a tesseract. Right, let's go back and I hope that the gears will come out here. In fact, I already have some gears here, so I need um, four gold gears and I need three iron gears to make a quarry and there you just saw a, an iron gear come down through here there should be another one in that case fairly quickly and here it comes straight down into the chest now there was three now there's four so we need to make first of all we need to make some diamond gears so we need two diamond gears so we need I think it's this way around yes and then we also need to have um, a diamond pickaxe. And we need one pickaxe. And one redstone. And that's then sufficient to make the quarry. So let me have a look at the recipe of the quarry. Yes. 
So I take and remove that, remove that stick out of the way. I don't need that anymore. Put that back in this chest. So we need two diamond gears, one diamond pickaxe, another stick, one redstone, two gold gears, and three iron gears. And we have a quarry. So the next thing I'd like to make is another tesseract. Actually today I've already made two but the videos keep breaking and I'm losing sound halfway through. So let's hope this is third time lucky. So to make a tesseract, what we need is a tesseract frame that we fill with resident ender. And here is the tesseract frame recipe. So we need the other diamond, we need four hardened glass and four enderum ingots. And the enderum ingots are what we need the shiny metal for. And we need the, uh, the cinnabar for the shiny metal. Let me demonstrate. So, what we needed here was four hardened glass. And in here, and we needed one diamond, which we already have. And in here we have some hardened glass. In fact, there should be hardened glass in this chest. Couldn't see it. So that's what we need. And then we also need... Um, some ferrous ore. I don't have any ferrous ore in here at the moment. These are dense ores. And I do have some ferrous ore in here. In fact, I only need one ferrous ore and one cinnabar to make a tesseract. And what we do is we go to the induction smelter, remove the. Ah, I ran out of I ran out of sand, but that's fine. Put the, uh, the cinnabar, one cinnabar in here, and one ferrous ore. And I should end it with three ferrous ingots and one shiny ingot. It's the one shiny ingot I need for the tesseract. Well, well it's not really for the tesseract, it's for the endium blend. And the next thing we have to do is we have to pulverize that uh, ingot because we need powder. So let's chip that into the pot. Pulverizer, I've got six. In fact, let's ship it into the segment. The segment. And here we have our shiny metal dust. Now, back to the drawing board. So, in this recipe, we need for ender and ingots. We need two, so we need two tin powders, one silver, one shiny metal, and one ezident render bucket. Let's go and sort out the ezident render bucket first of all. So we need some ender pearls. I have plenty of ender pearls from the mob spawner, but I don't have enough space in my <laughs> in my my inventory to put it so we'll get rid of some of the stuff that I don't need I don't need this redstone I don't need this sand I don't need this ore and I don't need the gravel I don't need that I don't need the iron in fact I don't need the cinema but I don't think that's sort there's a filter for that to sort it now let's try again right then I come over to the magna crystal here Put these under pearls into the magna crucible. They will go out into this fluid transposer and fill out the fluid transposer with resident ender. So what we need then is we need a bucket. And I have now a bucket of resident ender. So the other ingredients were tin and silver, I believe. So we have some silver powder here. We need one of those and we need two tins which is plenty of tin and that should be enough to make part of the endum blend so the first bit was that so we need one shiny metal lead not silver ah that's tin i wanted not to i picked up lead so never mind let's go and get some Tin from here. This should be tin. Yes. Put those back because we don't need those. Mm. 
And here we have the Endium blend, which is four is sufficient for one Tesseract. The next thing we need to, ma to make is the, let's get back to this one. The Pyruthium dust. And for this we need one coal, one sulfur, one blaze powder and one redstone. So we need one bla blaze powder, one redstone, one coal powder, which I have got, and one sulfur, which I've got. So I have all the ingredients here. So blaze powder, redstone, sulfur, and coal. So now I have the pyrothium dust and the endium blend. So we just go over to the induction smelter here. If I press the right key, of course, and put those into here. It doesn't actually matter which order they go into. We should get out of here four endium ingots. Actually, I upgraded my... Um, while that's working out, I upgraded my uh, version today to 1.90. And there is a new mod introduced, which we shall have a quick look at here now. And it's called Immensive Engineering, I think. Imme here we are. Immersive Engineering. And they seem to have some interesting th items which I have not seen before, like empty shells, armor piercing shells. Uh, this is quite. So they must have things like guns as well. So there must be a a revolver. I've seen a revolver casing somewhere. It looks like a, a tube with five or six holes in it. There we are. A revolver drum, a revolver barrel. So some ro a revolver hammer. So it looks like it's a, an interesting mod to explore in the future. Okay. Let's go back to the induction smelter where I now have my four enderum ingots. In fact, that's actually all I need for this. I've got the hardened glass in this chest. So let's make the Tesseract frame. I think that's hardened. Oh, I hope I've got this in the right order. Yes, I do. One Tesseract frame. And then we need to fill the Tesseract frame with Resident Ender. And here we have it from those 16. I just fill it in here. While that's working, we'll just go and get the other ingredients. We need uh, four bronze ingots and four um, silver, I think it is. Well, let me double check it again. So we need the tesseract frame that's filled. Four silver ingots and four bronze ingots. Bronze is made from copper and tin. And you can make that in the smelter very easily bronze. I should have plenty of bronze. We need four. And I need four silver, which I don't think I have silver here, so make four. I just need to go over to the induction smelter yet again. Put the uh, four, no, not the induction smelter, the induction furnace. And then we have my four silver ingots. Go back to the fluid transposer and take out the tesseract frame. And there's still some resident ender in this chest, which I will actually put into this particular um, tank here. I've got quite a bit of resident ender in here anyway. So, oops. How many times have I done that? This basically fills up this chest with what's remaining in the tank and it's very nearly full. In fact I could have used the resident tender here but for demonstration purposes I didn't want to do that. I wanted to show how you make it from ender pearls. Right, actually I don't need this one, let's put that one up here for the time being. So now we have the full frame and the silver ingots. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'll double check before I... Yes, the silver goes in the middle. 
Mm. And sure enough, I know I've got this red and a quarry. So let's go and see my old quarry and set up the and set this one up. And we, because the uh, the one in the um, now that's finished now, so we I can go and reuse that. Maybe for another one in the in the nether, I think it's probably preferable. So, um, let's just go up to the front door. Actually, before I go quarrying, let me just get rid of this. Um, now let's just go up to the front door first of all. Because in the center chest here, I can simply put what these items I don't want in here. I don't need these for the time being. Especially when I'm quarrying, that wouldn't make any sense at all. Okay, I'll put the materials in your back. And I have to find a place for open books as well. Which I think I'll take from this one here. In fact, I think I've got lots of open books, books. Ah, it's night time. Before I go quarrying, I shall go and have a sleep. And as you see, one click, a right click and you sleep and it reverses it back again. So this time I need the hang glider and I don't need hover mode, so right, hover mode disabled. And we're engine, engines on. So the quarry that I've been done in the past is over here. So I quickly fly up to around about 160. And then I can press shift and go very quickly along the, the world here. And as you can see, here was one village I think I've seen shown you before in the very first video but I'm not too sure it wasn't the one I was thinking of in the first video I couldn't find that right oh there we are I have a quarry which is actually finished and I also have a tesseract and a and a quarry I wondered where they would got to right so let's just pick these up. Oh, I don't really need to do that with the tesseract. It's much easier not to do that. No, they don't go together. Let's take this world anchor out of here. And let's carry on with my uh, quarrying. And this time we we'll just go another few blocks in this direction, I think. So what we need to do now is to, from my next up, I need some um, landmarks and some redstone torches. And what it will do is if I put the quarry here and then turn this on with a torch, we can see where we can build the quarry. And what I'd like to do is to build it here. Now obviously that line's a bit too high for where I am at the moment, but that shouldn't be a problem if I'd brought some with me, so um, some, some, let me just go back to hover mode here, and let's go and get some stone. This is, this is a good place to some stone, and of course I've got my new hammer, which I've now um, added some more redstone too. In fact, I added 100 blocks, so it's a lot, lot faster than it was the first time. Right. That'll probably do for what I want. And we want to put the end position here somewhere, so 53. That didn't take very long at all, did it? I think it's this one here. Oh, 
That was a good guess. Maybe that doesn't happen very often either. Right. So this over here, and then put into here the landmark. And the redstone torch I can put on the side here. Oh, no I can't. Because I've got this magnet, of course, it's rather nice in this respect. But I actually, what I don't need is, I don't mean my dolly in my hotbar, do I? If I shift walk, and then I can right click. Let's put that down there, and then let's put the torch in here. So as you can see, these line nicely line up. So we need to go and do the other side. And this is obviously the place where I've got to put it. So this one looks a bit more complicated to set up, but let's do it from the other direction. Actually, I don't need it so high, do I? A better one block below. So. Need to do, and I put down the last landmine, landmine, <coughs> landmark. I do beg your pardon. Oops, wrong one. Three. And I simply right-click these, and they should give you a nice um, block. I can take away the redstone torches after that. Flying cows. And all I need to do now is to put down the quarry here. So let's go and get the quarry. And it didn't work. I never understand that. Sometimes it works just fine, sometimes it doesn't. Dig it up again. Oops, now I've lost my landmark. Landmark. I don't think I need to do it here, maybe. Oh. That one's okay. this time it works so it's obviously at the last block that you put down is the important one and then here we can simply put down the tesseract program the tesseract to be quarry and that's basically all I need to do let's just go back now and collect the landmarks and the, the redstone torches And the very final thing I'll do in here, before we go back to base and turn it on, is to put the travel anchor down. Around about here is a good place for the travel anchor. 
Turn number two. And we shall simply label this one Corey. Yes. Now it's time to go back home. Let's go back home. So I'll go a little bit higher so I don't have to. And zero zero on the screen represents zero zero on the on the map. And from that point, you can calculate where um, strongholds are for the end uh, for the end portals. And as you see, when you press Shift, you go very fast, faster than the map can redraw. And there's home. A bit too high up. I shall soon sort that out. I think one more little drop. That should be about right. Yeah. Downstairs. And you see that this chest is on, because I've got all the redstone in there, that's clever. This now turns on the on the tesseract. And after a while, we should start getting items out from the quarry. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching. Bye-bye until next time.